Oh, my wonderful, amazing artists. Today, we're gonna do an origami paper uh, crane. A crane's a bird with a long neck. Not the, we're not making the crane that uh, construction sites use. And I actually don't know how to make it, so I'm gonna be learning along with you. I'm gonna use my phone. The word origami is a big word for making things out of folded paper squares. You can make anything. A fortune teller is a type of origami. And this is an art form that came from Japan. The cool thing about origami is that all you need is a square piece of paper. And you can do that if your paper doesn't already come in a square. You can just cut it at, into one using your scissors. Save that extra piece though. That's pretty useful for anything really. So we're going to start here. You can use a nice fresh piece of paper like this. Or if you have recycled paper, you can use that. Or if you have an old scribble scrabble paper, this is an amazing way to use that. Let's get started. So we know when we fold that we join our edges, then use our other hand to sort of flatten it down. And then we fold it in half again so that it's another triangle. So now we're going to open this one. and squash it. So what I found helpful with this step is to do it very slow and careful. And it's okay if you need to refold a couple times. And then I put my finger in here to guide it all the way to the tippy top. And then I use my thumb to fold it down. And then I bring this over here to meet the rest. So now we've gone from a triangle to a triangle and a square. Now we're gonna flip the whole thing over, bend this up a little, and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm sticking my finger in and joining the corners and now it's looking like a square I'm gonna fold towards the middle like that but only on this one layer because there's two layers here and then fold towards the middle again and then we're gonna open both of them and then we are gonna fold it open right here And up here, this is the part that gets weird. You're gonna open this up and we're gonna do this gently. And I'm kind of gently guiding it. I'm not forcing it because I don't wanna rip the paper. And I'm using nice heavy paper too. And I'm kind of getting it into its shape because I want it to be like a long, skinny diamond. Once it's looking like how I want it, I'm going to flip it on the other side. And this is going to be one of my swan's wings. Or my crane's wings, I should say. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fold, fold, and fold and then open. These are like our guidelines. Now it's open. And notice how as I'm opening, these parts are starting to fold in. The guidelines are really helping us. Now it's starting to look right, so I'm gonna smush and bend the paper so that those folds are nice and crisp.
now it's starting to look like this crazy thing. You can't tell the wings from the head. I think these are going to be the wings. And I'm going to open this, kind of like a book, pull it up, and this is going to be the head. Beep! Now I'm going to fold it all in half again, turn the book page, and then pull this tail up a little bit. Now, with just like with our fortune teller, we got to do what I like to call zhuzhing. We got to kind of guide it to the shape it wants to be. We got to smooth it out. And we got to get it where it belongs. We got to bend it, tell the paper where it's going and what it's going to become. Ta-da! My first paper crane. I was learning, I'm doing, this is the first one I've made in like five to ten years. I used to be really good at origami, but I'm not, I haven't practiced in a while. But I'm realizing that origami, something like a folded paper crane, you gotta practice it a couple of times before you get it and you have the idea of how the steps work inside of your head and you have an idea of how one step follows the other. But I had a really fun giving this a try. I'm gonna try making more origami in different styles of paper. I wonder how thin newspaper would compare to this thick uh, cardstock paper. It'd be fun to experiment with. I think you could also paint, use your, use your pencils to decorate one of these and that would be really special too. I hope you guys have a good time making art at home and that you're not afraid to try some art form that you've never tried before and maybe do some research on how to do it. Have fun making art at home. Bye.